Hi friends! Today in this review we are going to look at Shinhan gouache. We're going to look at the good, we're going to look at the bad, we're going to look at the ugly, and we're going to look at the beautiful. And hopefully by the end of this you can decide whether these paints are right for you. I have really been enjoying exploring the different small mixing sets that different companies have to offer. I really enjoyed the Holbein mixing set of five. That's kind of my top pick as far as quality and affordability. Uh, if somebody wanting to get into gouache paint, I've tried the Daniel Smith mixing set of four, which great quality, a little on the pricey side, but wonderful paint. Um, and I have had a, uh, a few M. Graham tubes kicking around for a while. I've just recently bought some Da Vinci, which I haven't used yet. But basically, I'm just kind of comparing the mixing sets that I find from gouache paints because it's a wonderful medium. I love how you can thin it down like watercolor. You can use it thicker like oil. It's just a, it's just beautiful. So this is this uh, set that I purchased. I paid $49 for it on Amazon and it's a set of 12 and it comes in a nice chipboard box which I will use for storing it since it's you know very compact. And these are the colors that we have inside. We have 15 ml tubes which if you're gonna buy some gouache, I know there are different sets out there and there are sets with a lot of colors and teeny tiny tubes. I would go for a set with fewer colors with the bigger tubes because um, that way you're not going to be afraid of using a color up. Um, like I said before, my favorite, I can show you what my favorite gouache set is that I'm recommending. It's this one right here by Holbein and it's five 15 ml tubes. I'm going off on a tangent. This is like the fifth, the fourth or fifth time I've tried to record this. This is my favorite set. This is around um, 25 bucks on Amazon. I really like it, but this uh, this is also good too. I think that if you like the Holbein gouache, you will also like the Shinhan gouache. But this particular set comes with Carmine. And if you look on the tube, you're going to see a color number. This is the number of the uh, the paint itself if you're reordering it at 004. It tells you what the light fastness is. This says um, a light fast of three stars. It tells you if it's opaque. Most of these should be opaque, quite frankly. And uh, it also tells you what series it is. So if you were going to purchase it, open stock, this is a B color. So um, depending on the, the series that it is, the price will vary depending on how um, how rare the pigments are, how expensive they are to make. So, yep, this is what you get here. We've got all of our information, PR17, the pigment information, the AP seal, information about the website, the made in Korea, and um, there's also some little safety information printed out there. But, um, yeah, yeah, this is a professional paint. This is uh, artist quality, and, and it's good stuff. So, but like I said, we're going to look at the, the pros and cons, the good, the bad, all of that. Inside the box, there is a list of the colors that they offer and their color codes. So um, that might be handy if you want to like check off the ones that you buy and just have a reference when you if you go to order online. Um, I don't think this is a very popular brand that's carried in stores in America, but um, sometimes you get an independent art shop that sells these. In fact, I hear. Um, YouTube artist Becca Hilburn talk about buying Shinhan watercolors at her local brick and mortar store, which is really nice because I, I love high quality affordable options and when stores take the chance to stock stuff like that, I think it's really wonderful. I'm going to set these out of the way and we're going to look at the swatches here that I've made. I've got all kinds of, all kinds of stuff going on on my table. Pretty, isn't it? Um, so I decided to swatch this out on watercolor paper and also on black paper uh, rather than just doing a stripe and swatching over it. I probably should have done the stripe too, but I'd already started it and I'm like, oh no, I'm not <laughs> not redoing the trick. Uh, but this way we can see what it looks like on black paper and on white paper. Our first color is Carmine, PR17. That color is not what I would consider light fast. It's a ASTM 3. I'm not sure what it is on the blue wool scale, but I would probably not trust uh, painting with that and hanging it up without some sort of protection on the painting. Uh, I often will do gouache and sketchbooks, but you know what? When I'm buying artist grade gouache, I do want that, that I'm paying the price for artist grade gouache. I, even though this isn't a fairly affordable paint, I still want that ability to hang my work up you know, in a room that gets a decent amount of light and not worry about it. So uh, so that's kind. that was kind of a bummer there. Um, of course, I could have researched all these colors before I bought it. I was just really excited to try this brand. So, you know, and you're doing your research by watching this video. So good, good on you. You're going to know. You're going to know what you're getting into. Uh, the next color is 008 Scarlet. And the pigments in that are PR112 and PR254. So I believe that's a naphthol Crimson and a Pyrrole Scarlet mixture. I wish it was just the PR254 because the PR112, uh, 112, um, is also an ASTM of three naphthol crimson. It's a beautiful color, but it's not the most light fast. 
then again, I mean, I don't know how much, if you're matting it and putting it under glass or plexiglass, I don't know how much fading you're going to get. I live far from the equator, I don't get a ton of sun in the house, so it'd probably be fine here, but you know, other places, not so much. If you're gonna paint a poster and hang it up in your shop wall and you get all kinds of sun in, you know, that could fade. Over here we have permanent yellow orange, which is a mixture of PY74 and PO13. Now I would prefer just the straight PY74, because PO13, that's a pigment you see often in um, like non-toxic children's paint or cosmetics. It's, um, it, it's a non-toxic pigment, but it's, you generally find that in your cheaper watercolors, like, uh, like a lot of the Mungio sets that they private label for different companies often will have a, a PO13 in it. It's a pretty color, it's vibrant, it's gorgeous, but it's just not very light fast. And the thing that, that kind of irks me about the two yellows in this set is that this is really way too orange. Um, a PY74 would have been a much better choice. And then this permanent yellow, which is a PY3, um, it's almost like a permanent yellow medium. It's not, it's not as lemony as I think a mixing set should have. I mean, they don't sell this as a mixing set. They sell this kind of like an assorted set. And with all these colors, you can get what you need to get, mix whatever you want. But it's, um, they're not the, it's not the most useful of a split primary set, I should say. And when I was mixing my color wheel here, if you look at this range here between the scarlet and the, um, and the permanent yellow, I mean, those colors are very similar. I mean, there's not, I don't feel like there's a big enough gap between those two for it to be as, as useful. And the rest of the wheel, I feel like we've got some really nice variety, but I feel like with there, and actually, honestly, instead of Carmine and Magenta, I think would have been a little more useful, but let's could keep on going. Now, the next color we have is, like I said, is PY3. That's a Hansa yellow, and I would say this is probably a Hansa yellow medium. Um, and here you can see the opacity of the colors on the black. And I have to say, I think on camera, they're looking a little more opaque than they do in real life, uh, just as I'm looking up at my monitor. So I just want to kind of, um, I want to preface that. These, these look more opaque on camera for some reason. It must be the reflection off the matte surface of the paint. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not showing on camera, I don't think, absolutely. Perfect. It's, it's kind of more complementary to the paint. I'm not bashing the paint. I'm not bashing the paint, but I am going to give you the uh, the real deal. Um, like I said, I would rather have a more lemony yellow. Now here we have permanent green light, which is a mix of PY3 and PY7. So I would rather they omitted that color. And look, because on my color wheel, I've I mixed those two colors. I got that. I did use a little heavier on the yellow. I think that actually, I think the PY3 they used on that mix was a more lemony PY3. I don't think it was exactly that pigment, but still, I feel like my mixed green A is prettier, and um, and B I would have preferred a yellow ochre. But I mean that is I guess if you like that shade of green, that shade of green is not necessarily going to happen with those two colors because of how how warm that permanent yellow is. So that's why I said I'd rather it be a lemon yellow. A lemon yellow would mix that color and then you could dirty it up with a little bit of a, oh, probably your more orangey yellow to get more of that color. Had that been a true, like a true split primary or true cool yellow. But I mean, I'm nitpicking a bit. I'm gonna be using this. I'm gonna put, be putting, when I'm all done with these reviews, I'm gonna be putting my paints together in a palette so I can have the most diverse mixing abilities or variety to go from. Um, PG7, I like that. That's a really great mixer. It's a really powerful mixer. I'm happy to have that in the uh, in the kit, and it's a single pigment color, uh, and pretty decently opaque. And then uh, moving down here to this next row, we have turquoise blue, and this is a mixture of PB28, which is cobalt blue, PB15 colon three, which is your phthalo blue green shade, a PG7, which is this guy over here and PW6, which is white. Now, I, I would prefer that that did not have white in it. I would prefer this be like a Thala, just a straight PB15 colon three. Um, they may be doing a mix because it's a more popular color. They may be doing a mix because um, they want it to be more opaque, like adding that white in there to, to opacify it a little bit more. But because of that, you've got a more muddy turquoise that's gonna be not giving you the most pretty mixes, and you'll see that here on the color wheel. When I mix with this turquoise, um, I get a, I get kind of a, uh, if I mix it with the, um, that mix, that color there that I mixed, if I mix, mix these together, but heavier on the turquoise, I get this kind of muddy sludgy green instead of, instead of that. Oh, you know what? 
Yeah, I, I just said I mixed that color and that color. No, I mixed. I mixed the turquoise and the yellow, and I got these two colors, depending on how much of each color. If I mix that and that, I might get that. Actually, well, why don't we do that real quick? Let's do that right now. Um, I used a little, a little uh, eyeshadow palette to test these colors out, because I know I'm going to put them in a different palette. So we got that yellow. Hey, I'm not above saying that I'm wrong. Let's see if we end up with that color. I think we need, I still think we need a cooler yellow, but let's just see. A little bit, well, let's test that. Add a little more yellow to that. Maybe there's some white in there that's undisclosed because they don't have to disclose. Yeah, it's still more warm. It's still more warm, so I don't think they were using that yellow in that. But still, I want to make, make sure I mention that. So when I did the, we'll talk about the color wheel in a bit, but when I did the color wheel, I took the, the, the two yellows, two blues, and two reds, and that's what I mixed with the color wheel. But anyway, yeah, that's going to give me some muddy mixes because of the white that's in there and, and having so many colors. Plus, a PB28 cobalt blue is, is a little, it's a little muddy in my opinion. Next, we have ultramarine blue. Plus, ultramarine blue is very similar to a straight cobalt blue. However, I don't know what their basic, what cobalt blue they use because the that pigment can shift depending on how it's, um, how it's processed. So ultramarine blue, happy about that. I use ultramarine blue all the time. Um, that's PB29, nothing wrong with that. Then we have PV, and look how beautifully opaque that is. That, that actually is like glowing opaque. Um, then we have PV15 Violet. This is a mineral violet. And so I actually um, I actually made a really wet puddle of it because I wanted to see if it would granulate because that's a beautifully, in that, that pigment and watercolor granulates beautifully, beautifully. And you do get some pretty granulation there. So I wanted to let you know that too. If you had the set, try that out with your watercolors. Like, like really add a lot of water and let it settle out. I also tried it with the ultramarine blue. But um, I didn't get quite as much of a uh, granulating effect with the ultramarine blue. I think they must have really milled it down finely and maybe added some other opacifier, opacifiers to it because I didn't get the granulation there. Not that I'm expecting it with gouache, but I thought it'd be a fun thing just to test because that's such a unique color. You don't see it very often um, in a, like a basic set. So I thought it was worth checking out. Then we've got burnt sienna, which is a mix of PR101, which is what you see oftentimes for burnt sienna. It's either that or PBR7. And then it has PO. 34 in it, which um, is an orange pigment. I hope I'm not off track because I just ran upstairs because my oven timer was going and I had to take some bread out of the oven and then I got distracted. Anyway, so we were working on burnt sienna here. That's what we were talking about here. We can see it on the black and then on the white. So this is a mix of PR101 and PO34. And I got to be honest with you, I'm not that familiar with PO34. So I'm going to look it up really quick. And um, let's see, that does not have a great light fastness uh, rating either. That is bright orange to an orange red. It's got a four to five ASTM light fastness rating, which isn't good, but on the blue wool scale, it's five, six to four, five. So it's mediocre. Um, mm. So this will be a little less orange if it fades, I guess, which wouldn't be the worst thing. So I would definitely prefer a PBR7 burnt sienna or burnt umber, personally. Um, and then we have ivory black, that's fine, PBK9. It's it's blacker than this black paper. If you see how, can you see how velvety black that is? Um, I don't really have the need for more black, so that would be handy for priming. Say if you do a really awful watercolor painting and you're just bummed because you just ruined that beautiful piece of watercolor paper, you can prime it over and you can do pastels on it. So I, you could prime it with gouache and gouache is a great surface for, um, for pastel. And then we've got white. It's a basic titanium white. It's a PW6 and yeah, everything seems to be, seems to be fine as far as looks and performance and, and in the corner there I just added a little bit of white to it to kind of see what the colors look like as tints. Um, the colors are very pigmented. They definitely overtook the white very easily and yeah, but the white is opaque enough. So I'll show you some um, some mixing that I did and then I'll show you some artwork that I did with them so you can kind of get a good feel for it and decide what you think. The colors in mixes actually, I feel like the mixed colors were much more opaque than the colors on their own. This is my cool primary where I used the Carmine, the um, Hansi Yellow, what they call it, Permanent Yellow is what they called it, um, and the Turquoise Blue. 
And you can see I got a very muddy purple there because of that turquoise blue and all the white that had that uh, came in it. And, but I got a pretty green and I got a decent orange. And then with a the warm version, I got a good orange. But like I said, that that um, scarlet there, I think it's called, it's got, yeah, scarlet and permanent yellow orange are very close together. So I probably could have used that one on the warm because that's a very neutral yellow. Where I could, probably could have used that there too. And then I would have got a prettier green. But um, yeah, I got very muted um, gray green, and then I got a kind of an eggplanty purple there, which I'm not surprised. But you know what? I wanted to try. Why don't we do this too? I want to try this blue and that red for a purple. Let's see what that looks like, and we'll do it on watercolor paper, and we'll do it on um, we'll do it on the white and on the black. So we've got ultramarine blue. I actually have mixed those two colors together because I did it for. A painting I was working on. I was using it for a shadows and a pomegranate. There's the blue. This is going to be a little watery. So you know what? It's not going to be fair on the. Um, it's not going to be fair on the black. Because I'm just gonna. I've got too much water in it already. I can tell. I'm getting a much. I'm just gonna put it over here in the white section. Okay. I need a little more blue. That's a pretty kind of like wine color though, isn't it? And that's a pretty blue. Let's mix them together and see what we get in the middle. That's a, that's a better purple, which I would expect because those two lean more towards purple. Um, I'll just put a swatch there. I don't think it's going to show up because it is so, it's so much water in it. Let me add a little white to that. That will give us an idea of what the undertone looks like. There, it's it's not as vibrant as the violet that comes in the set, but I'm not surprised because that's a single pigment violet. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can definitely mix. Oh, you know what? I didn't even have to do that because on my color wheel I did that. On my color wheel, I took the carmine and the ultramarine, mixed it with more blue and then with more red, and those are the two purples we got from those two colors. So when I do a split primary color wheel, what I'm going to do is take the warm and cool version of each primary color. So instead of having like a... a, a yellow, blue, and red, just one of those colors, I'm going to use the warmer yellow, the cooler yellow, the cooler blue, the warmer blue, and the cooler red, the warmer red. And um, people get confused when I say warmer blue. A warmer blue is going to lean more towards red, so ultramarine blue is a warmer blue. A cooler blue is going to lean more towards green, and that is a uh, that would be like your phthalo blue or your turquoise. It's, it doesn't really matter, warm and cool. Think about the undertones of the color. Like if you look at that blue, you can say, yeah, that looks a little more green than it does purple. You look at ultramarine, you can say, yeah, that looks a little more purple than it does green. So just ask yourself, um, if you're looking at a red, does it look more like orange or does it look more like purple? And that will tell you which way your color is leaning. And don't worry about warm and cool. Just think of if you're going to mix a purple, you want to start with the red that looks a little bit more like the purple or like a magenta, which is like a red that's very, very pinky purple. So um, this is my color wheel using the split primary colors from the set. Um, like I said, the permanent yellow and the scarlet are a little too close together. Um, I feel like this should be a little bit more yellow and that one should be a, like a, more of a lemony yellow. But I don't think this is, this is a, a basic set. It's not necessarily a mixing set. A mixing set would be fewer colors, but designed to be really versatile colors. These are versatile, but not like you're going to be mixing every single color. I like to use like a, oh, probably a maximum of like five colors in a painting and mix from those five. And they could be different five colors every painting. It just, it just keeps harmony because you're not pulling new colors all the time and it helps you, to, it challenges your brain, it makes you really look at the values because if you can't mix the right color you can get the right value and it will work. That's how dark or light something is. Um, and there, here's our, is our cool primaries and our warm primaries on white paper. And our purples do look a little bit better there because we've got the white underneath that it doesn't have to fight with the black. So one thing I'm noticing is a little bit of shine on these and it's not a shine from the binder but what it seems to be is like, it's like the, the, the painting almost polishes itself. Let me just try rubbing. Yeah, if I rub over this, it gets a shiny finish. That's kind of weird. I don't think I've ever noticed that before in a gouache. I'll have to see if my sketchbook paintings rub and get that thing. I thought it was maybe something with the paper because I was noticing it there, but I think it's, I think it's something to do with, oh, it seems to be more in oranges, oranges and yellows. Let me just, uh, Let's try something. Huh. Look at that. On these colors containing yellow, 
in orangey and yellow colors, they get a little bit of a shine to them when you, uh, if you rub up another piece of paper over it. I don't know what that is. If you know what that is, let me know in the comments. That's new. I haven't seen that before. But, um, but yeah, I mean, you can definitely mix what you want to mix. You can get your colors. I didn't have any struggle painting with these, but, um, I am a little, uh, a little bummed out, honestly, with some of the light fastness, uh, ratings of some of the pigments that were used, which, you know, to be fair, in the Shinhan watercolors, I, there was also a few colors that were, that were dodgy light fastness wise, but for whatever reason, like the quality of the watercolors just kind of blew me away and, um, they, it just seemed like there was, let's see, how many colors here have questionable pigments in them? One, two, three, uh, four. So it's not bad, I guess out of 12. Four out of 12 though, that's a lot. That's like a third or fourth. Four out of 12, that's a third. So that is kind of a bummer. But, um, eh, you know, I, I'll definitely use use these and and enjoy them. But I, the more that I'm using them, the more, even though I'm enjoying painting with them, the more I'm thinking, you know, I think you could do better. For, for painting like that just getting a phthalo blue like I just bought some um you probably think I've lost my mind I just bought some da Vinci gouache and I bought the I bought the just the tubes I wanted and because they were having a great sale and I could see exactly what each tube what the pigment was so I knew exactly what I was getting and I didn't granted I can't get that much as much paint for fifty dollars I can get but the tubes are bigger and I know the tubes I'm getting are I'm going to use all the way up versus having a, a color that may be like, eh, I don't know if I'm going to use that one because I know that's all dodgy, so I can only use that in my sketchbook. So that kind of like, that would kind of, kind of bums, me, bums me out. Maybe I should do an actual light fast test because when you're using your paints thicker like you would in gouache, they're going to be more robust than with watercolor. You're not spreading out those paint molecules so much. So probably the fading issue is not as bad in gouache as it is watercolor because you're almost painting in mass tone all the time. But still. Um, that's that's something to think about if you're gonna buy these paints. I don't want to you know overpromise them because they're they're lovely to paint with, but that's definitely an issue. So I've got a couple little paintings that I did. Uh, these marbles here, I just did those today because uh, I did a bigger painting. But I'm like I, I want to use a couple more. I want to do a couple more things to uh, just to make sure that um, that I that I've got a good handle on these and I'm not missing anything big. Um, these thin down great and they still look great thin down and I did the I did the background pretty well thin down layering up was really easy um, I thought the colors were nice and vibrant this was from the shiny paint challenge these marbles so that was fun to do I really enjoyed it I did this little um, actually I, I forgot to make my little pomegranate seeds I do that real quick um, oh I added way too much way too much water to that um, I'm just gonna hint at the pomegranate seeds there uh, it worked out really well. I kind of went around the, uh, I just used black for the background, but I did have to add some water to have this flow because this is Arches paper. It's kind of rough. Um, and you know, had I gone over with another, like a thicker coat and not watered it down so much, I wouldn't have any vari variation in the background, but it doesn't bother me. I think that's fine in a sketchbook and I'll have to be careful not to close that because that's wet now. But I mean, yeah, it's fine. It worked fine. And this is painting small. I don't generally like to paint that small with gouache, but I did want to finish up this layout because isn't it satisfying to have a full layout done? Um, but yeah, those were fun to paint. I really enjoyed painting this one here because I could go nice and big. You can see how washy and watercolorly, watercolory I did the background. Everything just worked really well. Um, I have to say though, I think I the quality, I would say the quality is definitely better in the Daniel Smith or the Holbein gouache. Um, but these aren't bad. These aren't bad. The light fastness in the Holbein and Daniel Smith colors that I personally have, which are their mixing sets, are better. Uh, and the, um, so the, the Daniel Smith, I got four tubes that were this size for $40 and this was 49. So it is, it is cheaper per tube to get this. And you know, I mean, you are, uh, I don't know, you have to look at the colors and decide if that's a good value for you. I mean, it comes down to it. I don't think it's they're overpriced or they're a bad deal, but I just, when you're buying a set, you want to make sure that most of the colors that you're getting in a set are ones you're going to use so that they don't just sit there full in the tube and never get used. That's wasted paint. When the tube, when the tube doesn't get open, when the paint doesn't get used, that's the only time you waste it. You could paint a zillion horrible paintings. That's not wasting the paint because you're learning. Wasting the paint is having it sit in the tube. Now I want to share a Daniel Smith, actually I'll share a Holbein painting and a Daniel Smith painting so that way you can see the paint on the same, the same paper. So there's, uh, I did that with the mixing set of Holbein which is just five colors. Love that paint. 
Um, and then the Daniel Smith. I did that with the, the Daniel Smith mixing set, and I did struggle with getting that teal, um, the teal color for the, oh, you know what, I'm also getting that, um, I'm also getting that shine on the gouache here, just from it rubbing its facing, its facing page, so apparently that's a gouache thing, because I'm seeing it right there, I don't know if you can see it, but maybe if I, if I hold it to the light, you could see it, can you catch that little shine there? So that's going to be, maybe that's a, well, it's not an artist paper thing, because it did it on the other papers, it must be a gouache thing. And something else I'm noticing is that I'm getting some transfer from the uh, Daniel Smith gouache onto this painting. This was actually the Mission Gold gouache. Not Mission, what do they call it? Magello. What was it called? Uh, titanium? The Titanium class gouache, which is dries down beautifully. But I'm bummed I'm getting some transfer. I guess I need to put some glassine in between the pages where I use that, where I use that gouache. Um, that was a Daniel Smith gouache as well up there. So very... Um, that was a mixing set that I also bought some burnt number. So I'm going to say that the shin hand quality is nice, but I'm not so sold on this set. I did not, I couldn't find the sets of 24 at the time I'm recording this, so I can't compare colors in those sets. I do think that these 12 are, are in the 24 set A. So maybe the set B has better colors. I think the set B was more expensive. Uh, like $90 versus $85 and I, I mean I thought those prices were pretty good $4 a tube you know you can't really you can't really turn your nose up at that but um, and in a sketchbook I'm not gonna worry about it but if I am going to do something that I think I may want to hang on the wall then I'll definitely reach for my Daniel Smith or my well or you know I'll just go through I'll use the colors that I know are light fast I might end up I'll, I mean that's stored so well but I mean I may end up putting them in palettes by light fastness I don't know I don't know what I'm gonna do, but oh, one more thing I wanted to show you while we're here is the common the color swatches compared to the uh, what did I do with that little swatch? The swatch is compared to the the Daniel Smith and the Holbein primaries in their mixing sets. Because if you've followed me before, or if you've taken my advice and you bought the Holbein set. Then actually, if you have the painting wise, if I didn't know what, what pigments were in there, I'm going to say, here's the thing. If I didn't know what the pigments were in these paints, I would be giving them a much higher recommendation and higher rating because the use of them and the way they mix, their colors, their mwah, chef's kiss, beautiful. But knowing what pigments are in some of these colors, that's that's the only reason that my review is not glowing of these. So I just want to start out. I, just, I want to say that. I don't want to be a snob. Um, but I just want to let you know because I know a lot of people are going to ask me about life fastness and I want to be able to tell them honestly. So if you have the Holbein set, the you've got that magenta that's way cooler than the Carmine. Beautiful. Not an overlap. You've got this Ahansi yellow light that's way cooler than the permanent yellow. See how it's it's more lemony. It's just cooler than that. And you've got the cyan blue, which is more, which is stronger and uh, more robust, more intense than the turquoise there. So this is uh, this is a much cleaner color to mix with. With Daniel Smith, your Daniel Smith um, primary red, it's a pyrrole scarlet, I believe. It is, um, it's kind of right in between, right in between the two reds that you get with um, uh, with the Shinhan set. Your ultramarine blue is, I would say it's a little less red, so maybe this is more of like a French ultramarine, they just call it ultramarine light. Well, I'll, sometimes when a color is called light, it means that it's a little bit redder, like cadmium red light is a little bit more orangey, and a cadmium red deep is a little bit more purpley, and this ultramarine light is a little bit, uh, seems like it's a little less red, I don't know. Anyway. Uh, so they're, they're, I mean, they're pretty similar. They're, they're both ultramarine, they're both ultramarine pigments. It feels like this one's a little bit redder. The ultramarine light versus the Daniel Smith ultramarine. Um, and then we have the yellow, which uh, I think theirs might be Hansi Yellow Medium. That's just about an exact match for the Hansi Yellow that's in here. So if you have the Daniel Smith mixing cell already, your primaries are pretty much covered. Um, then you'd have these other colors, but you would have duplicates basically is what I'm saying. If you had the whole line set and you just want to expand your colors, you don't have duplicates, except for the black and white. And you have the white in the Daniel Smith set. So I just wanted to put that out there. I think this would pair really well with the whole line set. Just uh, keep in mind, you got some, you got some dodgy, potentially dodgy pigments there. I don't want to disparage 
the paint. I don't want to disparage anybody that likes the paint. I like the paint. I like the paint. I just wish that maybe the Carmine was like a, a PV-19 or and uh, the Scarlet didn't use a PR-112 and the Permanent Yellow Orange didn't use a PO-13. And, you know, there's just a lot of... And like the Turquoise Blue, just give me PB-15 colon 3. Give me the Thalo Blue. Burnt Sienna, just give me the, either the PR-101 or the PBR-7. You know, so there's just... I feel like there's just a... There's just, too many in this day and age where we can have anything we want, really. You can you can find the paint that will meet your exacting needs. Um, in this day and age, you can get... Ex I feel like you'd be settling for this paint versus getting a different brand. And, you know, I've seen the Holbein set of 15 ml tubes. The, this size, the sets of 24, going for $85. Like, last month they were $85 on Amazon. So, uh, and that's... I know I don't know all the pigment information in those in that particular set. Maybe it'd be the same situation, but I'll tell you the the set of five mixing colors from Holbein are phenomenal. The mixing colors from Daniel Smith are phenomenal. They're expensive, but if you're buying paint, you're only going to use half of it. You might as well get the more expensive, smaller set from a different brand, in my opinion. I am brand agnostic. I know some people um, will not use a brand that's high quality because of you know certain, you know, marketing things, and, and yes, people think I have an axe to grind with Daniel Smith. I don't. I like their paint quite a bit, actually. I like their gouache a lot. Um, and I know some people refuse to use Daniel Smith, and that's fine. They're get hold by, and there are plenty of good options. I'm hoping the Da Vinci paint is going to knock my socks off. This paint, I like it. I like it a lot. My only qualms is the pigment information. This is the pigment in some of these, there there are better pigments they could have used, and why didn't they? Maybe they do it other colors, and just what they pulled together for this set is is this. And if I was to buy individual tubes, if I had a store that sold individual tubes, I would be very happy with it. Because honestly, the quality of the paint is great. It's just it's just those pigments. So hey, I hope this was helpful. Take with it what you will. Um, I mean, for fifty dollars, four dollars a tube, but if you divide. Okay, let's do this. Let's divide, because, I mean, I'm really having a hard time recommending these just because of those single... If you're going to use them in a sketchbook, but you know what? If you're going to use them in a sketchbook, you can get a set of jelly gouache for cheaper and have way more colors and have that same beautiful painting experience. Um, so let's see. If I just considered the colors that I would buy, if, like, open stock, I would actually pay money for these colors, would be one, two three, four, five. So if I take five and divide it up by 50, that's 10 bucks a tube. No, no, thank you. No, thank you. I can do better than that for $10 a tube. So, um, well, I would say, yes, Shinhan gouache is great. This particular set, I think, while it mixes well, and you can learn how to paint, and you, you're going to paint beautiful things with this. Just the light fastness issue is my only qualm. I, maybe I will do a light fast test on this, although I live in Maine, we don't get that, we don't get enough sun to really do a proper one. If anybody knows of anyone that's done a light fast test on this set, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to check out that video, that blog post, whatever, because um, if, if I could see a light, I'll probably do a light fast test on these because I want to love these and I want to use them. Um, uh, but, you know, it'll probably take me a year to get enough light exposure. <laughs> but then again, if I stick it in the window for, you know, a month and there's no change, you know what, I'm going to do that. I'm going to put tape over this. I'm going to stick this in my garage window because it's it faces, uh, it faces east. It's going to get the most sun. We'll check back after a month. Okay, remind me. Remind me that I have that taped in my window, please. That's what we're going to do. But anyway, there's my review for the Shinhan gouache for what it's worth. Oh, my word. I hope this was helpful. Anyway, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoy these reviews. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye. Epilogue. Here's what we're going to do. I have just punched out all these. <laughs> I've actually cut out. Used one of these old creative memories. Uh, anyway, I have cut out circles from the from some black paper and I ovals oh my word I don't know my shapes anymore how can I have an art channel um I'm going to tape these on and then I'm going to put this in my garage window for about like I don't know a month or two and we're gonna see <laughs> we're gonna see we'll see if we'll see if like if this clear tape offers any protection because then if clear tape offers some protection too then we've got like uh Maybe then probably behind a piece of plastic glass will give us a little protection. Anyway, yes, this is not like a scientific light fast test. This is 
me wanting to know if I could paint with these and hang up a painting or give it to somebody and they hang it in their house in Maine, if it will be okay. Then again, I mean, I have had trouble with jelly gouache stuff eating, so. Yeah, we're going to stick this in the garage window. We'll check back, probably on my community tab or blog or something in a month. We'll see how it does, maybe longer. I don't know. We'll play, but I don't do this sort of thing. This isn't my lane, but I'm curious, and maybe you are too, so let me know if you are, and we'll see you next time. Happy crafting!